they I've got us live on Facebook, but what I'm hearing you say is that you are always continuing to learn and grow. Is that part of some of your uh, uh, success over the years as being uh, focused on never ending improvement? Well, I would say so, yeah. I mean, <laughs> I enjoy it. I don't, I mean, the, the, the side benefit is it makes me better at whatever I do, but even if it didn't, I just enjoy learning new things and growing. And uh, when, I'm, when I'm in a stage of not learning, I really get kind of depressed. I get kind of bored. Yeah. Well, I am going to kick us off here. Thank you guys for who are joining us here in Zoom land because you get to be up close and personal with the legend in my mind, at least as far as a, a great real estate agent, an awesome leader, an amazing instructor, always my favorite, a super connector, I really think is your superpower. Mr. Dick Dillingham, I'm so honored. I'm about to cry. I get all like emotional sometimes when I'm just, just so honored. I know I see my friends smiling faces up there. So I think they're excited too. But Dick, you know, I started doing these little Friday Zooms just to kind of connect, like you're saying, you know, um, getting better and learning from others. And so you said, yes. So we're so honored. Today is about you. I want to hear about who you are, where you are, what you do, and how life is going these days. And then I might have some other questions for you. Okay. Well, it's my honor to be on the call. I, I mean, I, I, I mean, I, I just can't say no to Jenny. I mean, you know, look at her. I mean, think about it, be around her. You just can't say no to her. Right. And so it's my honor. And it's kind of fun because I see some guys I know on this call and I see some guys that are on James's call all the time. I know Chris is, and I know Donna is. Uh, and Andrew, where are you in Wisconsin? Where? Are you in Madison? Nope, I'm about an hour north of Milwaukee. Oh, okay. What town? Kewaskum. Oh, an hour north of Milwaukee. I'll leave it at that. <laughs> <laughs> um, all right, so I've been in the real estate. I'm in Dallas, Texas. That's my home. Has been for 53 years now. I came to college here and I just stayed. And uh, I've been in the real estate business, it was 44 years as of April 1st, this past April 1st, 44 years wow. I've been in the business. And I've been married 48 years to the same lady. And I've been in home, I've been in the, the home I'm in now, I've been in that home for 36 years. So, so I'm, I'm not much for change, you know, from that standpoint. Uh, growth is one thing, change is something else. Uh, I've been with Keller for 25 years. Uh, when I joined Keller, we had uh, about 1,800 agents. Um, about a year after I joined Keller, we started Keller Williams University. There were like 11 or 12 of us. Uh, the first dean of Keller Williams University was Dave Jinks. Or I, yeah, he was the first dean of Keller Williams University and was the dean when we got it started. And I still remember meeting in that room and uh, the others in the room. And I, I, was, I came to Keller Williams as a trainer. I was a trainer for the Certified Residential Specialist or the CRS program. And I came to Keller Williams, uh, very interested in uh, uh, learning and uh, education and was fortunate enough to be selected to be on the first faculty. And um, gosh, I... I uh, for ooh, that's about almost 22 or 23 years, about 100,000 miles a year clip. Uh, so uh, I've done a lot of training and a lot, and I, I love it. I love it. I've learned so much. Uh, you know, one of the things, because I've been able to, to teach um, Quantum Leap, which is a course on how to have a more purposeful life, a lot of what I've learned is about myself. And uh, what I, what I have learned about myself is when I came over to Keller Williams, I didn't know much about myself because what I, what I came over as, I came over as an agent and I was frankly in kind of a survival mode back then. And I had this uh, mistaken idea that if I could just sell more houses, I'd be happier. And I learned all these things about like, that's not the right formula and you need to know more about yourself. And so uh, we have two children, both girls. One's married and lives in Charlotte, North Carolina. And I'm going there on Monday. 
and we're going to spend some time with her. And then, and then Dory, we're going to Florida. We're going to saw we're going to Sawgrass, meeting another couple, and we're going to play golf on the TPC uh, Stadium course that just had the tournament a couple of weeks ago. And then we'll go back to Charlotte and then come on back home. But anyway, we're looking forward to that trip. And uh, so I'm a regional owner. I'm a market center owner. I'm no longer an OP any, well, I, technically I am, but I'm working on not being an operating partner anywhere. I'm turning most of those roles over and uh, just enjoying life. We've had, uh, I was at a men's group uh, on um, uh, just a couple of days ago on Wednesday and the facilitator of the group asked us four questions. I thought it was kind of interesting. He said, I'm just going to ask you these questions to think about and they will kind of kickstart our meeting. It said, uh, where there is crisis, there's often opportunity during this past year. How has a change of routine been a blessing to you? By the way, th th these are men, th uh, I think one person might have been in real estate other than me, but so these are men across, across all industries. Uh, what habits or new routines Routines do you hope to keep as things return, quote unquote, back to normal? What's been the hardest part of this last year and how has, uh, how, how have you overcome that or how have you dealt with that? Actually, his question was, how has God been there for you for that? Because this was a men's Bible study. And those were great questions and made me think about it. And actually, some of the answers that the other guys gave were enlightening. Um, one guy it was kind of funny. He was the first one to speak, and he's he's a he, he he's a pool. He does pool maintenance, swimming pool maintenance. He said my routine hasn't changed at all, and he said right now I'm busier than I've ever been. He said, but one thing that did happen is my wife. My wife's life was turned upside down because what my wife did, virtually all day every day, was char charity work, and group work, and giving to others. And all of a sudden, all of that shut down. And he said she got very depressed because she didn't know what to do with herself. She didn't have anything other than this outreach to others. And I thought that was interesting because that, that was a little bit of a thing for me. I didn't mind not traveling 100 days, but I did mind not being with people, you know, in a classroom setting. Um, so, so we have Zoom. Yes, we do. And so that's where that's that's me in a nutshell. So uh, it, it, you guys are open to asking me anything you want. Uh, I am prepared to talk to you about a couple of things. Matter of fact, Jenny, you you had this idea that one of my strengths is connecting, and I had suggested several things, and I've learned some things about connecting. You know, when you learn things, sometimes it's completely new to you, and sometimes it's a reminder to you. You know what I mean? And I think the reminders are, are often as important as the new. And I'll tell you, I'll tell you how that came up um, because I, I do work pretty hard at connecting with people. I work hard at connecting with people in a classroom setting. I worked hard at connecting with buyers and sellers when I was in the business. Matter of fact, I would tell sellers, I would say, you know, Mr. and Mrs. Seller, there's really only two questions that we'll deal with in, in deciding who you should do business with. And one is, um, do you like me? Do you see yourself doing business with me? Do you think that would be a good experience? And number two, am I credible enough to get one house sold? That's, that's really what it boiled down to for me. And so a, a major part of my listing presentation was the walkthrough. Because to me, that's the relationship time. That's the bonding time. I'm very good at, uh, I, I am very good at connecting. And I don't know that I realized it quite like that. But recently, and this is a, a resource for you guys. Uh, I went to John Maxwell's Leadership Podcast. John Maxwell's Leadership Podcast. And he has two of his sessions are on connecting. Two of them, how I learned to connect with people, how I learned to connect with people. And if you've ever heard or seen John Maxwell, uh, he's a great connector. He is a great connector. Now, he was really only talking about pretty much from the stage. 
but I think his, I think the concepts apply really across his life. And so he talked about noticing at an early age that some people were connectors and some people weren't. And he used the playground and when he was in elementary school, he could see the connectors were surrounded by people. The people who didn't connect were by themselves. He saw it uh, amongst his teachers. Some people would fight to get in one class and some would fight to get out of another class. I mean, so what, what is this magic, this charisma? Uh, Beverly Steiner used to call it the, well, she still does, the it factor. The it, what is, what is it? And um, so Maxwell said, one of the things I learned pretty early was um, the, what, makes you, what, what makes you connectable is using your strengths, being yourself, being genuine, using your strengths to connect with other people. And he said, but the catch was when I first learned that, I really hadn't thought about what my strengths were. And so he said, over a period of years, I have developed a, a checklist or a, a list of the strengths that I have that I use to connect with other people. And I thought, okay, that's kind of interesting. And so I'm gonna read you his strengths and then I'm gonna read you my strengths. So here are his strengths, so there's, there's five. Now remember, this is, this is probably, he didn't say this, but, but I have a little experience with this because we talk about this in Quantum Leap. The, the first of the six personal perspectives is self-mastery. And in self-mastery, one of the steps you need to have self-mastery is to know your strengths and your weaknesses. And essentially, learn how to apply your strengths to achieve your goals. Okay, so, so Maxwell probably has 20 or 30 strengths, but he looked at his list and he said, now which ones of these are particularly useful to me in my connection with others and connecting with other people? And I thought, okay, all right. I need to hear this too. So his first one, and, and, I, and I know him, I know him, and a lot of you know him well enough that I could kind of check off on these if I agreed with it. Well, his first one, he won me over with just his first one, his humor. He's hilarious. That guy is hilarious. Now, he's funny for connecting sake, not for entertainment sake. He's, he's so funny. When he was at our, I think it was our last family reunion that was live. He was a speaker at family reunion. And he was talking about going on the cruise through the fjords of Norway. You remember this? And he didn't want to go on this cruise because he was writing his book, but his wife wanted to go on this cruise. The whole thing was just hilarious. It was hilarious. Anyway, he's got a great sense of humor. And his comment is, I enjoy my audience, my subject, and myself. And so I, I checked off on that. His second strength was authenticity. I do not teach what I do not live or believe. Number three was confidence. He said, I naturally feel good about myself and others. And he goes on in the podcast itself. He says, I always envision that others will do the right thing, say the right thing, make the right choice. He said, I don't have any, he said, I have no fear of getting up in front of other people, which is by, by the way, a strength to not be afraid to get it, to get up on stage in front of other people. His number four is hope. That's a strength. He says, I love to lift people and encourage them. And he does. Uh, and number five is simplicity. And he says, his comment is, I am not an intellectual. So he says, I just try to keep things simple so that everybody can have some of it. And I think he does that with his books. He's, he writes with his books and he's very good about that with, with the way he writes. Now, if you've ever been in the same audience with him, in the same room with him, another one of his strengths is his eye contact. He has incredible eye contact and he'll look at you and there's maybe 500 or a thousand people in the room. He'll look at you and he'll say, hi, Jenny, my name's John and I'm your friend. And you just go, holy cow, I, that was just, it's just so impressive when I see him do that. Okay, so just for fun, I'm going to read you the ones that I said that I used. Now, by the way, I think mine was almost like internal, and I didn't really do this in a purposeful way, but, but he's caused me to kind of relook at this and say, well, okay, so what, so be more purposeful about it. What do you use? And, and I started off with humor. Because some of you know me and you know I am very funny. 
I'm a very funny guy. Hilarious. Yeah. <laughs> now, the interesting thing about strengths and weaknesses, just in general, is you'll find that some of your some of your strengths and weaknesses uh, are, are they're on both lists. So humor can be on both lists. It can be a strength and a weakness. And more often than not, when a strength is also a weakness, it's because it's being overused. You can be too funny. You can be too funny. Or you can be funny at the wrong time. Timing can be a, a problem. Okay, so my second one was passion. I'm a passionate kind of person. If I'm not passionate about what I'm talking about, if I'm not passionate about the, the class material, then I, then I don't teach it. I'll, I'll turn it down. Um, it's not about the money. It, it's, really, it's really about the experience. And I, and, I, and I have to be passionate. And I am fortunately passionate about meeting people. Uh, I'm, I'm an introvert for the most part. I'm an introvert. So meeting new people who I have no connection to is a little hard. But, but frankly, just to be in the classroom with me, now we have something in common. And now I can kind of bridge that gap. If, if I called one of my clients and I said, I'm expanding my database. So uh, Dory, tell me, who, who do you know that I should know? And if Dory, if you gave me a name and I, I could easily call them because right now I don't consider that I don't know them. I do know them through you. So I have to make a connection but I'm not the guy that, that starts a conversation in the elevator with three or four or five people. I am not that guy. I just do not do that. Matter of fact, if I'm in a restaurant, I don't go from table to table uh, introducing myself. I'm, that's just mortifying to me. I, wouldn't, I, I just can't, I'll never see myself being able to do that. Um, but, but I can figure out ways to get to know people. All right, so passion or authenticity, I agree, that's me too. I'm also, I always call myself an encourager. I'm an encourager. I think if you're, if you love teaching and coaching for that matter, I think you are deep down an encourager. And John just added the term hope, which I like. I, I hadn't thought of it as hope, but hope and encouragement are really go hand in hand. Um, I'm also simplistic. Uh, I don't think John's quite the dullard he thinks he is or he says he is. Um, uh, and I, I think I have a good mind, but I, I, I try to put that good mind to work by making things simple. I, you know, there's a, in the foreword of the MREA book, it talks about that success is really simple. And a lot of us think that, that, that success has dangers and pitfalls and should be complicated. And I heard an expression one time, it says, it doesn't, it doesn't take any talent to, to make the simple complicated, but it takes talent to make the complicated simple, right? And then of course I have an aha, a, 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 an aha, I'm a, I'm a great collector of ahas. And uh, I love this aha, it said, simplicity is the ultimate sophistication, which goes in line with that. It takes talent to take the complicated and make it simple. When you read John Maxwell, he takes the complicated and makes it simple. Frankly, when you read any of Gary Keller's books, he takes the complicated and makes it simple. Makes it easy to read. Um, I would say Dave Ramsey does the same thing with his finance books. Robert Kiyosaki makes his books easy to understand. Now, the moment you pick up a book and it starts off with all the research and the findings and the data, now you got a whole different deal. That's a harder book to read. It's a harder book to stay with, right? Um, okay, I have a good memory. I, I have a good memory and that comes in handy. That comes in handy for connecting with people. Uh, it comes in handy that, that, that I can bring up things that maybe happened 10 years ago or I can bring up a class that one of you was in with me. And, and uh, it helps me it helps me with, I work hard at remembering names. I'm not, look, and, and let me tell you something about strengths. Strengths can be strengths without being perfect. That means I can't remember everybody's name. And sometimes I forget a name of a person that I've gone, that I've known for 20 or 30 years. Matter of fact, if I'm out walking and I start thinking of names, because I have a prayer list or a care list, and I start going through all these names that I'm going to pray for or care about, 
And I'll stop at one and I can see them. I can see their face. I can describe them. I know where they live. I know who they're married to. I know how many kids they have. I just can't think of their name. And then I'm thinking, uh-oh, it's dementia. <laughs> and then I think, no, it isn't. It's old age. <laughs> it's just old age. Because about a block later, I'll have worked through it, you know? And I start off with A and Angela, Audrey, B, Barbara, Brenda, Belinda, right? And, and sooner or later, you know, it'll come across, you know? Um, all right, so I'm here's one. I didn't realize I was as good as I was, but I'm not nearly as good as I want to be. And that is asking questions or being curious. Being curious or asking questions. Um, I'm very purposeful about it from the standpoint of, I get a set of questions that I put together kind of like a script because I wanna, I wanna, get, I wanna get certain specific pieces of information. And I'm gonna give you a, an example here in a second. I, when, I, when I start talking to someone, I'm very purposeful, purposeful about wanting to know things about them or uh, I'm very, I'm very purposeful about checking in with people in a classroom to see whether they're with me or not with me and what the issues are and what the ahas. I love asking people for their ahas uh, or their takeaways. And then the last positive for me that I put down that I'm, I'm good at, and I looked at, I thought about walking through a seller's house and I, and I thought about the first buyer consultation and I thought about classroom is I'm very cool. I'm very cool. And Jenny knows that's an acronym, K-O-O-L. And it stands for, I'm a keen observer of life. I pay attention. I pay attention. I look for things on the wall. I look for, I look for educational certificates. I look for hobbies, evidence of hobbies people have. Um, when, I, when I walk around in the class, I always love to do that at franchise systems orientation. I'd get there early, the buses would get there early, and I would just walk around the class, checking in with people, talking to people. I love the idea they all had name badges on. That was, that was very good. But I, actually, I was already starting to work on their names. I, it, I had actually started a week earlier. I get the roster a week ahead of time, and I started studying names. And if I didn't know somebody, I might look them up on Facebook, if, if I thought I knew them, but I couldn't picture them, I would, come, I would go to Facebook. Even today, if it's your birthday and I know you, boom, happy birthday, happy birthday, Dory. If it's your birthday and I think I know you, but I'm not sure, then before I wish you happy birthday, I go to Facebook, I open your page up, I look and see where do you live, what do you do, let me go to the photos, oh yes, I know that person. So I work at it. I work at it. So I'm very cool. I'm very intentional about looking around and observing. So I'll give you one quick example of some of these uh, in action. And it's when I was on the airplane and uh, someone would sit down beside me or I would sit down beside them. And I really had it in my head. It was like, it was like a target. They were a target for me. And if I had 800 people in my database, then I looked at them and in, in, in sort of in my mind, I said, well, hello, Mr. 801. I was going to get enough information to be able to follow up with them, put them in my database and follow up with them for what? Forever. And so I would start off and I would say, so these were very scripted, kind of pretty scripted questions. I would say, so are you headed home or are you leaving home? Now I'll tell you a funny quick story. That wasn't my first question in the beginning. My first question in the beginning was, where are you headed? Now, I expected them to say home or to work or vacation or something. But one guy said to me, he said, well, hopefully I'm headed the same place you are. And I thought, well, yeah, you got me there. So anyway, I needed to tweak that question. So I changed it to, are you headed home or are you leaving home? Because the point of the question, whatever the question was going to be, is where do you live, right? And if you live in Dallas, now I'm going to zero in on what part of Dallas, 
I'm going to, I'm going to zero in on, well, if you live in Dallas and we're taking off here from San Jose, going back to Dallas, what brings you out to San Jose? And guy said to me one time, he said to me, he said, well, I'm an attorney. He lived in Dallas. So he says, I'm going home. And here's, a, here's an aha for you. If you'll just pause for just a second or two, they'll ask you the same question back about 80% of the time. So I said, so are you going home or headed home? I mean, are you headed home or are you leaving home? He said, I'm going home. I said, oh. He said, how about you? I said, I'm going home too. He, he, I said, so what brought you out here to San Jose? He said, well, I'm an attorney. I'm a litigator. And I actually was not in San Jose, but I was up in, uh, I was at Stanford Hospital. And I was taking depositions because I do patent infringement in the medical field or something, I don't know. And I, I took a little sinking spell because I thought, well, what, up, what am I gonna talk to this guy about? I, I got, you know. And he said, what about you? What brought you out here? I said, well, I, I'm in real estate and uh, we have some offices out here. And um, they'll almost always ask if you say real estate, they'll, a lot of, most of the time they'll say residential or commercial, and then they'll get around to who are you with? And then he was kind of surprised. He said, so you're in residential with Keller Williams, but and you're in Dallas. So why out here? I said, well, I'm also a trainer in real estate. So, I mean, we're making it, we're doing pretty good here. So I said, so are you originally from Dallas? No, no. I moved to Dallas to go to school. I went to SMU. I said, you went to SMU? Oh, I said, that's fantastic. Did you enjoy it? I said, I went to SMU too. Did you enjoy SMU? And he goes, yeah, I met my wife there. He said this, he said, my wife's dad is the uh, general counsel for SMU. He's, he's like the number one attorney for the whole college. I looked at him and I said, your father-in-law is Leon Bennett? He looked at me like, what has just happened here? We've got a little magic going on. He goes, you know Leon? I said, yes, I know Leon. I said, I sold Leon and his family their house 20 years ago. Did I, did, you know that funny thing that can jump up and bite you? Watch, watch this one. I said, yeah, matter of fact, I knew your wife before you did. That, that, didn't, that wasn't good. That wasn't good, but I'm good at recovering. I am good at recovering. I said, because I looked at his face, keen observer, right? I looked at his face and, he, and his face was going, that's kind of odd to say. And, and then I had to say to him, I said, yeah. I said, she was five years old. She, matter of fact, she spilled her ice cream in my back seat while we were touring houses, you know? And then, okay, all right, well then that's okay. You know, I thought you were, you know, kind of being, you know, kind of goofy, you know? So I had to dig myself out of that little hole I had created. Um, but see how it works is I know exactly the kinds of things. I know what part of Dallas he lived in. I coincided, it was coincidence in this case, but you'd be surprised six degrees of separation. You'd be surprised. It doesn't take many questions to come up with some things in common. One guy, I was taking him to the airport. He was in a CRS class with me. I was taking him to the airport, uh, just giving him a ride since I was going to the airport also. And I found out he has a son who was at school at SMU. And I'm thinking, well, this is just too good. And this guy uh, was, we were in Denver, but he was from Palo Alto. Well, Palo Alto is part of my Northern California region. So I wanna kind of connect with this guy because he can maybe help me connect with other people. And he said, yeah, my son's at SMU. I said, gosh, that's amazing. I said, I went to SMU too. I said, is he in a fraternity? And he said, yeah, he's a Fiji. Phi Gamma Delta. I said, I was a Fiji. Oh my gosh. Give me your son's name and number. I'm going to call him. I'm going to have lunch with him. And I did. And now his son's about a $50 million producer in Palo Alto and still hasn't come to Keller Williams. But, but we're, we're tight, you know, he and I. <laughs> okay. So anyway, those were kind of fun things for me to see. And, uh, so here's a curious thing. I really love John Maxwell, and I don't know if I love him because he's so similar to me in terms of his, what he does and how he does it, because I think about, I loved Zig Ziglar. Well, I would say he was, I mean, one of the things, he was funny. Dave Ramsey's funny. 
Uh, I, I like people who have a good sense of humor. I really do. I appreciate that in them. And, and I hope people appreciate it in me. So that's my story and I'm sticking to it. I think we all agree. We all agree with your list. And something I heard there is that you should even add your, your humble. You shared a lot of those examples of other people that are awesome and you are right up there with them. So I, I love how you're always a teacher and, and we're learning new things along the way and then you're connecting the dots for us. You're an amazing um, teacher like that. Well, thank you. Something else I want to say is I went back to our notes when we were recently together in Dallas and in, in my section, I took notes from you. You said, network with opportunity ninjas. What's that mean to you? Okay, so um, we were talking about net, uh, opportunities. People come, come to me frequently because I've been at Keller so long and because I've had several roles. Um, what they don't realize is I just can't keep a job, but uh, they, they think I'm hot stuff. And so they'll come to me and they'll say, so what, what do I need to do to get an opportunity here at Keller Williams? And, and, I, and I would say to you, to get an opportunity anywhere, right? I, I would say, and, and I've, I've experienced this, I've watched it, I've heard others talk about it. Mark Willis used to have a great phrase about he says, he says, uh, he says go, go close $10 million and recruit 20 people. And then we'll talk about an opportunity. And so I'm going to translate that. And the translation is, so the first step is kill it uh, doing whatever you're doing. If you're an agent, kill it. Do 10 million, do 15 million, do 20 million. I, you know, I mean, but, but don't expect an opportunity to search uh, to hunt you down if you do one million or a million and a half. Now, there's nothing wrong with doing a million or a million and a half. You know, I, I'm, by the way, I'm talking volume, volume. We had recently had a lady in our market center who asked me about her chances to become a team leader. And I said, well, one of your, I don't know what your chances are, but I'll tell you one thing you have to work on. And we've talked about this before. You closed two and a half million dollars last year. Now that's okay, and that matter of fact, that, that caps barely, but that caps, but that does not demonstrate the use of the use of the knowledge of models and systems at any high level. It just, I, I'm not saying you don't have models and systems, but but to only do two and a half million dollars in a year, you're you're certainly not at the mastery level. And so, how are you going to coach new agents and experienced agents? How are you going to coach them up if you're the team leader? So. So kill it doing whatever you're doing. Become valid, right? Become valid. Second, tell everybody you know you're looking for opportunities. Tell everybody you know that you're looking for an opportunity. You don't even have to tell them. That they may say, well, what opportunity you want? I say, I don't know. If you got one, run it by me. I'll tell you if I want it or not. I just want it. I just want, I want, the, I want to be in the game where I'm asked. Um, Matter of fact, the very first company I was ever with, a traditional company, I was 26 years old. It was a traditional company. And within a couple of weeks, I said, you know, I want to be asked to, to be the manager of the office. And at the time, I said, I don't know if I want to be, but I know I want to be asked because they're not going to ask me if I'm failing. They're only going to ask me if I'm succeeding. And then I'll decide by then I'll have a better idea of whether I want to do it or not. And I ended up doing it. They asked me after nine months, I became the manager of the office. And after a, an additional year, I realized I shouldn't have done that. <laughs> that wasn't a match for me. But I let my ego take over. And when they asked me, I said, well, I need to think about it. And I called a, uh, a friend whose name is... Mike, I'm not going to go and tell you what his last name is, but it's, it, it, it rhymes with roadie. So I asked him whether I should accept this manager's position. He was the manager in an in a adjacent community for the same company. He said, yeah, you ought to take it here and here's why, and here's why, and here's why. So it's really his fault that I took it and didn't enjoy it. So a year later, one, like one year later, 
The president of the company comes in and on a regular visits, she comes around once a month, everybody. And I said, well, I, I, I said, I think I've had enough. I said, I, I'm ready to resign. And back in those days, you didn't resign being the manager. I mean, the manager, you know, holy cow. Well, I did. And I said, I'm, I'm resigning. I, I need, she says, why, what's the problem? And I said, well, so it was, it was okay for a while because it was all new to me. But I said, it's not so new anymore. Now, the names change, but everybody who walks in my door has a complaint or a problem. And I said, that's my whole day. That is my whole day. Now, by the way, very traditional back then. This was like in the late 70s. Uh, but you, you, you contrast a traditional manager to our team leaders, very different even today. Very different. Very different. Um, but then the last thing is, okay, so tell everybody you know that you want opportunities, but let's be a little more, a little more purposeful. Let's pick out the people who I call them opportunity ninjas. And so who are the ones who have, who have been on the path to opportunity, who, who are doing things out of the norm, who are mixing it up with the people in Austin, who, who are our, not, our notables? Oh, I, I heard this uh, not too long ago. Who are our celebrities? Our celebrities. And I thought that was kind of a cute phrase. Who are the celebrities of the company? And so, you know, Mark Green, I mean, Matt Green, Mark King, Jason Abrams, uh, the Papazans, Wendy, Jay, uh, and just go on, any of Gary's top 100, Jenny, Dory, you know, you guys are celebrities. So just hang out with people who make things happen, right? And by the way, I talk about that in Quantum Leap, even your bucket list, even your life goals. How do you achieve your life goals? Well, you need to have a plan. The plan needs to be good. It needs to be specific. And then you need to tell everybody you know what's on your bucket list because maybe they can help you. Um, I did this the other day on a call with the Florida education system. And I told them my little story about wanting to go to the master's golf tournament. And then I told them how it happened, how I got to go. And then in the, in the course of that call, one of the people on the call say, I get tickets every year. So if you ever want to go again, let me know. I, I don't even know. I never met her. I'd never met her before on that call. Matter of fact, she didn't even, her video was, she didn't even, I mean, her video was stopped the whole time. I don't know what she looks like, but I know what her name is. And you won't forget it either. I won't forget it. She's <laughs> going to be, she and I are going to be very connected. You know why? Because goodness comes to good people and you're such good people. Well, thank you. Huh? You know, you, you work on this in, in class when I ask people to write down their strengths, people say, well, I don't like to talk about myself. I said, well, okay, then don't share it, but you got to know it. You got to know what, what you're good at. Why? Don't work on the stuff you're bad at. Use the stuff you're good at. John, uh, John Wooden, who's the basketball coach, was the men's basketball coach for UCLA, won 14 national championships regarded without a doubt regarded as the greatest men's basketball coach, coach college basketball coach of all time he said don't let what you can't do weakness stop you from what you can do strength and you make more money you're happier you're you're more passionate about working in your strengths than you are your weaknesses so but but you got to know what your strengths are so make a list make a list of your strengths then make a list of your weaknesses and not to fix the weaknesses, but to work around them or to avoid them. You know, um, I, I fear rejection, like at the highest level, like I'm, I am petrified. So for me to call on a for sale by owner or to call on an expired, it just isn't going to happen. So how can I work around that? I can start a team and one of the people I can hire would be a person who would make those calls, right? I didn't like to get I didn't like to get sign calls or ad calls on my listings because I would just say hello and they'd say hey I'm calling about one two three Main Street and I say oh okay what, what do you need to know and they say how much is it I'd say two seventy five <laughs> that's exactly what would happen nothing it's silence total silence 
Now, this will surprise you, but I didn't convert a lot of calls. Okay, now, the good thing is I have a pretty good mind, and so I knew I wasn't very good at this. So I contracted with one of the agents in the office, and I said, I'm going to send you all my ad calls and all my sign calls, and you just pay me just 10% referral fee. I, matter of fact, if it's a lot of trouble, don't even worry about paying me because I'm not going to do a thing with it. And, uh, but don't let what you can't do stop you from what you can do, or don't let what you won't do stop you from what you will do. I, I loved that quote. Here's another quote I love from another author I love. Same, same formula though, Andy Andrews. He's humor, he has humor. He's very straightforward, simple to read his books. I'm not, matter of fact, I have his new book, um, Just Jones. You know how I got that book, Jenny? How? I got that book because uh, uh, when I did your session, uh, Little Miss Arlington sent it to me because I mentioned that book. Did she Jordan. tell you she was going to send it to me? No, Jordan Davis. Jordan Davis sent me the book Just Jones. Matter of fact, after the podcast of Maxwell, I had this book, but I haven't read it. So this is probably on my trip to North Carolina and Florida. Uh, two books for sure I'm taking with me are Just Jones and Maxwell's Everyone Communicates, But Few Connect. And I've had this book for a long time. I just had not gotten to it or just didn't know. But, but his podcast tweaked my interest and I want to read this book. You know, four, there's like four of Maxwell's books are on my reading list, on my top book list. Uh, Intentional Living, which I think is number one in all my books, probably. Failing Forward, Today Matters, and Leadership Gold. Uh, those are four great books by Maxwell that for me that I like, you know. You, you also figure out the books you like depend on what you want to learn about. So leadership, of course, leadership, everybody needs to learn about leadership because everybody's a leader. And frankly, all of Maxwell's books are about leadership in one way or another. He just changes the cover <laughs> and the title. Okay, so enough about me. I'm way over already. And we could let you go on all day, right, people? I see faces. They're smiling and clapping. This is great. See, a great instructor just goes ahead and answers a question that's in the chat, which was a book recommendations list. So, Sarah, you're, I think you got your questions answered there. So, uh, Andy's books are Traveler's Gift, The Noticer, The Noticer Returns, and Just Jones. Uh, I gave you uh, Maxwell's. I always recommend Kiyosaki's books, Cash Flow Quadrants, Rich Dad, Poor Dad. I recommend Dave Ramsey's books because they're simple to read, they're good. He's got three or four. Uh, I, read Mo, I recommend Mo's Biography, A Joy-Filled Life. It's a great book. I just gave it away to an, a, newer, a newer agent. Just the other day, I gave it to him. And um, let's see. Um, I liked... Who Moved My Cheese, that's a good book. Um, Zig's book, See You at the Top, can't beat that. Holy cow, Zig Ziglar. Really, maybe my first real superhero other than my dad, Zig Ziglar. He's really the guy that inst instigated me coming into the residential real estate business. We were at a, sem a seminar. There were 5,000 of us in the seminar and all of a sudden he said, well, everybody needs to take a break. I need to talk to Dick Dillingham for just a second. And so he just talked to me by myself. Well, he didn't say that, but I know that's what happened because I know he was talking to me. And here's what he said. He said, not happy in your job right now? He said, I got, I got uh, two alternatives, two options for you. He said, number one, learn to be happy. Or two, go get another job. Well, at that moment, I was in the banking business and I was hating it. And so in a week, I quit and got into residential real estate. That was 44 years ago. What a great note to end on. Learn to be happy or go get another job. And what a, what a cool opportunity we are in our real estate industry that 
Uh, you can love selling houses or you can love teaching others how to sell houses, how yeah. to connect with people. So I love that we can do what we love inside of this, this business. Yep. I've loved it the whole way. By the way, not every day, but I've loved it the whole way. It's just, I love it. I just love it, love it, love it. Well, I know you guys are with me and you don't want this to end and it, it must end, Dick. Otherwise, yeah. you know, we might miss a I've point. I've gone over. <laughs> I'm meeting someone for lunch at one o'clock, so. All right. Well, you get over to that. We are so grateful for you. Well, thank, thank you. Thank you, guys. Thank it's you. good to see some of you other than, you know, the call every morning with James. Now there's, there is an opportunity ninja. There's, there's our Shaw. celebrity. Let's James all say. Shaw. He's a celebrity, right? This is the celebrity for He's sure. He's a celebrity. I'll make sure you, I'm he, has such a, he has such a wonderful job. You're on those calls all the time. He's, he, he does such a wonderful job. I mean, I remember James when he was brand new to Keller Williams, brand new. Yeah. And uh, you, you knew he was going to make it then. I mean, he just, you know, celebrities just kind of, they have this shine all around them. You know, it's an aura, right? He's just gonna, hang out with them. I'm I, gonna, I used to call them the Eagles Club. Get the Eagles Club. It's, yeah. That's a bunch of celebrities, right? Yeah, we're, I'm gonna send up and comers. By the way, up and comers, up and comers, people who are up and comers. I like to I like to hear the story about someone who's been in the business one year and did 22 million their first year. Mike Dooley, Mike Dooley in Arkansas, was like boom. I love the Dooley. He's yeah. awesome. Yep. He's far away from me here. So. Yep. All right, we're gonna let you go, Mr. Thank you guys. Have Thanks for a great day, coming. guys. Thank Bye. you. Have a great weekend. Love your life. <laughs> Love it. Bye, guys.